Hi, I'm Dr. Henry Black, President of the American Society of Hypertension and a Clinical Professor of Internal Medicine at the New York University School of Medicine. We're in the midst of what's been called a beta blocker controversy. It's kind of interesting because uh, the issue was raised curiously by Scandinavians who had been big advocates of beta blockers. Lars Lindholm and his colleagues about 2005 published the first analysis which suggested in fact that in hypertensives, not in heart failure or arrhythmias or angina, but in hypertensives, beta blockers should not be a first choice agent unless patients had some other problem. They based this primarily on studies with the tenolol, which was the most commonly used beta blocker, and were able to show that with the exception perhaps of, of MI, uh, that there wasn't much benefit from beta blockers compared even to placebo or to other active agents. Further studies looking at other beta blockers were pretty much confirmatory, but atenolol was, was the main drug used in all of these. Now atenolol is the 17th leading generic agent sold in the United States for any cause and one that we thought was usable and reliable and uh, where we shouldn't question its value. Now the British Hypertension Society agreed with the Scandinavian recommendation and would not now recommend a beta blocker for a hypertensive as a first choice agent, but reserve it for a third or fourth drug. The United States guidelines are currently being done. We don't know where they're gonna fit, but the European Society of Hypertension put beta blockers where it had been as an option for first line treatment. Now, now recently, Dr. Franz Meseli of, of uh, Roosevelt St. Luke's in New York City and his colleagues did a meta-analysis to try to understand this better. Now, meta-analytic studies are always a little bit dangerous. In fact, Dr. Meseli once uh, talked about meta-analyses analogous to bouillabaisse, where one bad ingredient can ruin everything. But he's become quite an advocate of these and what they recently did was look at trials that use beta blockers compared either to placebo, which was only two, or to active therapy. And they found a very interesting and somewhat counterintuitive finding, that the more the beta blocker lowered heart rate, lowered heart rate, which beta blockers do, uh, the more likely they were to increase events. Now why I say this is counterintuitive is that in athletes, for example, uh, who have slow heart rates, they do extremely well with respect to cardiovascular disease. And sometimes drugs which increase heart rate, usually because of sympathetic stimulation, perhaps like dihydropyridine calcium antagonists, seem to increase risk. In epidemiological studies, in Framingham, for example, if your resting heart rate was more than 84 beats per minute, you had an increased risk compared to someone who was lower. So how come beta blockers, which lower heart rate effect more effectively, turn out to cause more problems or to prevent fewer problems. Now one of the studies compared, this was the INVEST study, compared beta blockers to verapamil, which is another drug that lowers heart rate. It's a little hard to understand that exactly. But I think right now we've got a, like every other time, every time we think we know something, someone comes along and makes us rethink it. Now I don't know that I can really get too excited about this meta-analysis, but I'm certainly gonna start paying some attention and maybe we've got to pay, start paying some attention in some other areas as well. Thank you very much for your attention.